Why, hello there, lovely one. It's me, Helen the Great, and I've got a numbers patterns question for you. It says, study the following sequence, 2, 11, 28, 53, and 86. First question, write down the next two terms of the sequence. Now, in order to do that, we need to figure out what the pattern is, and the best way to do that is to actually just sit and compare the numbers. There are various patterns that it could be. We could be adding a consistent amount each time. Let's explore that a little. I'm going to switch to yellow. So how much are we adding between there? To go from 2 to 11, we're adding 9. So if we're adding a consistent amount, we should add 9 to 11 to get 20, but that's 28. So that's not what's happening. The other one we could be doing is multiplying. Now, in, edit, in order to get from 2 to 11, we've got to multiply by some peculiar number, and I can guarantee it's not going to get us from 11 to 28 as well. So let's carry on playing with this adding thing. From 2 to 11, that's 9. From 11 to 28, there's a difference of 17. From 28 to 53 is 25. Do you see a pattern occurring? From 9 to 17, we're adding 8. And from 17 to 25, we're adding 8. So we should expect to add 8 again to get to 25 plus 8 is going to be 33. In other words, if our hypothesis hypothesis is correct. 53 plus 33 should be 86, and that's exactly what it is. So if we want to write down the next two terms of the sequence, we're going to have to figure out what we're adding next. That's going to be 41. Let's add 8 to 41, and that takes us to 49. So 86 plus 41 gives us 127, and 127 plus 49 is going to be 176. So those are the next two terms in the sequence. The next question says calculate a formula for the general term, show all steps. Now in class you would have gone through how to do this with a quadratic number pattern. And you would have eventually got to the point where you know that 2a will be equal to the bottom. Let's color code this nicely. So 2a, let's go over this with red, 2a will equal 8. It's that first one down at the bottom. Then 3a plus b will equal 9. And lastly, let's go to purple, a plus b plus c will have a value of 2. So you just need to memorize that it's going to be 2a, 3a plus b, and a plus b plus c, and then figure out that 2a will be equal to that bottom one, 3a plus b will be equal to that middle, and a plus b plus c is equals to 2. So now let's solve. We've got 2a is equals to 8, and I'm sure you can see immediately that 8 divided by 2 is 4. Because we know that a is 4, we can immediately substitute it in over there. So we've got 3 times 4 plus b is equals to 9. Let's play around with it. So now we have b is equals to, and it's going to be 9 minus 12. Why? Because 3 times 4 is 12. So that gives us b is equals to negative 3. So we have the value for a. We have the value for b. We now just need to figure out what the value of c is. And we do that with playing. So 4 minus 3 is going to give us 1, plus c is equals to 2, and I'm sure you can see immediately that c is going to be equal to 1. So the general term for any quadratic formula has the form 
tn is equals to a n squared plus b n plus c. So therefore, this general term is going to be tn is equals to 4 n squared plus, well, let's actually just change that to minus 3 n plus 1. There we go. Not so bad, is it? So just remember those three, the 2a, the 3a plus b, and the a plus b plus c, and you'll be fine. But of course, that's not the end of this question, is it? You're always going to throw in one last thing that asks you to work with the general solution. So it says, use your formula you derived to calculate which term equals 4001. So the term value that we're looking for is 4001. We need to figure out what is n. I'm just going to rewrite the general solution that we've found. So it's going to be 4n squared and it was minus 3n plus 1. Minus 3n plus 1. Okay, so we're going up. We've got to make it equal to 4001 is equals to 4n squared minus 3n plus 1. Let's rearrange it. We can see already that it's going to be a quadratic equation. And let's just get it to that point where we can actually prove it. Minus 4001, which leaves us then with 4n squared minus 3n uh, minus 4000. What you have to be careful with, with a question like this, is that n will always, always have a positive value and it will be an integer. So it's a positive integer. That means we can't get three and a half as an answer. And I was playing with this a little earlier on, so I figured out how to factorize it. Um, and I encourage you to go do it in your own time as well. But it basically factorized to x minus 32 and 4. Ooh, I put an x there. Let's change that. 0 is equals to n minus 32 and 4n plus 125. So you could have found that by using the quadratic formula. In fact, it probably would be easier to do it that way rather than to factorize, you know, when you do that and that and that and that. So use the quadratic formula. I suppose that's useful skill to have in grade 11. And n is equals to 32. So when n is equals to 32, the value of the term will be 4001. Well, my lovely one, that's it for now. Much love.